This is App Therapy Club. This show is actually focused on apps, and the focus is on our part-time content creators and coaches to be able to actually leverage software in a smart way so that you can really be more efficient with your content creation. And so what we're focusing on today is avoiding digital clutter. I wanna go ahead and share these tips with you to help you to really audit yourself. If you follow the instructions and the tips that I'm about to share with you, you'll be able to see what your inventory is today, what do you have in your stock, what should you be using, and if there are things that you need to mark off your list and stop paying for, there's a monthly or annual subscription, then you'll get rid of those too. Welcome to App Therapy Club, a place for part-time creators and coaches like you. Join your host, Tanya Smith, founder of Get Noticed with Video and Stream Like a Boss TV, to learn about online tools and smarter ways to make great content, even when you're short on time or resources. Now let's get into the show. Welcome, my friend. Today's purpose is really to help you to be smarter about your app purchases. So we're going to focus on that for App Therapy Club today. What we want to talk about today is the idea of how digital clutter can really affect your productivity and how to actually get past that. One of the things that I've discovered myself, and I bet you have too, is that we... (laughs) Many of us as coaches, as content creators, as service providers in some form or fashion, we are buying up a lot of stuff. There's a lot of information coming our way. There are a lot of sales. There are a lot of deals. So one thing I got hooked on, I think it was probably, I don't know, five, 10 years ago, was the idea of lifetime deals. And while they sound great, and many of them are, and can literally literally save you a ton of time and money, what can happen is that we just overdo it. We're buying things. I don't know if you've been in this situation, but you probably have, if you're like me, where we purchased something, and then maybe a year or two later, we purchased that same exact thing or another app or platform that does the same thing that we already paid money for. And so we can get into a trap of doing that over and over again, not being effective, never actually taking the platform out of the box, (laughs) never actually using it and dusting it off. And this goes for courses and all that kind of stuff too, but I wanna focus on the whole idea of apps in particular because if you're like me and many of the people in my community over at Stream Bosses Academy, we've had this conversation probably every single time we meet where we're talking about a new online tool, something that we found that we're like really excited about. And then at some point in that conversation, I hear someone say, you know what? I think I may have already bought that and I just haven't used it yet. Why I actually taught called this app therapy club instead of app addiction or apps anonymous apps, you know, or us. (laughs) It's because it's about healing. I want us to be healed from making these investments that truly are taken away from us versus giving back to our time, our resources, and our efforts. So specifically when it comes to digital clutter, what that is is basically when you have a lot of just crazy content taking up a bunch of space, you're probably paying extra on Google Drive or on Dropbox or whatever your host of choice might be. You're probably paying a lot of extra money just to store these things and you hardly even know what's in it. And where we want to get to is a place where you know you have identified the platforms and the apps that you need. You have them in place. If you don't have them in place, you know what you need to get. You know the features, the benefits. You know all the tactical things that you need to know about the platforms that you could use in your service cycle. And we're eliminating additional fees and expenses that we shouldn't be paying. Because again, how many of you are out there paying for stuff that you don't even use. You've got these subscriptions that you're paying monthly for. I just, I think it was two of them within the last couple of months that I realized, wait a minute, I just got charged for something. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> and it gets really bad when we've done that multiple times over and over again, and we're not paying attention because we're not being efficient with our time, our money, or our resources. So There's a couple of different criteria I want to talk to you about when you're evaluating the need for yet another app, because some of you may be frequent pursuers of sites like AppSumo, 
There's a bunch of other ones out there too, but AppSumo is a very popular one. It's one that I frequent and I often do video reviews, which I will as part of this series, to talk about some of those different platforms and how they can be useful for you depending on the situation or circumstances that you have for your business. But the most important thing when you're looking at the criteria for or the need for another app, you want to identify what exactly am I missing now that I would use this app to help me with. So one of the first things that you want to be asking yourself is, is there something that I'm missing? Because instead of going down that path, what we normally do is we say instead, hey, that sounds really good or that looks great. I just want it because it looks so great. But you haven't even analyzed what your business need is. So what is the need? What is the gap that this particular tool or app will fill? In addition to that, you want to Really think about, from a budgeting standpoint, if I need this app, no, I'm going to back up. If I want this app right now, is it within my power financially, um, time-wise? Am I going to invest the time to actually use it and to learn how to use it so that I'm getting the biggest bang for my buck? Am I doing those things before you make that purchase? And so one of the things that I've actually done for myself when it comes to some of the AppSumo purchases is I will go out and I will scan and I'll see what's out there. But instead of purchasing right away, because usually there's a time limit, so it'll be on for a couple weeks or maybe you're at the last day, I don't know. But what I will do is pace myself. Now, back in the day (laughs) when we used to be told to freeze our credit cards, it's kind of like that, but you're mentally doing the freeze on yourself and saying, okay, I think I want this app. I'm going to read through the reviews. I'm going to try to understand what it does. But I'm going to give myself at least 24 hours before I click. Just 24 hours. Because sometimes what you'll find is when you come back 24 hours later, like make yourself a note in whatever your favorite app or tool of choice is for reminders. But when you come back 24 hours later, you might find out that, you know what, this probably wasn't something I actually needed. And if you do what I'm about to share with you that you should do, that will help as well. So what I want you to do, even if you don't use the database or the spreadsheet idea that I'm about to share with you, I want to encourage you to sit down and just make a list. As a matter of fact, let's do that today. As you're listening to this podcast, I want you to sit down and make a list of all the apps you can think of that you own. I don't want you to think about how many. (laughs) I asked that question the other day and it put some people into trigger mode. I want you, however, to really sit down and just make a list of any app that you can think of that you've purchased and ever, like not just the last year, not just the last six months or even last week. How many, what apps do you have that you know that you have in your arsenal? I want you to make that list. Now, when you make this list, what you're also going to do, and I'll show you in a few minutes, my database, my spreadsheet, you're going to want to categorize these things. Okay. Now, some of you probably have hundreds, (laughs) if not more, but hundreds of apps. But the goal is I want you to see exactly what is in your inventory. So compile a list of all your apps, take an inventory of those. The second thing I want to ask you to do is to evaluate each app based on a set of criteria. So what is the purpose? And if there's a category that you can put around it, so is digital graphics creation or Maybe it's um, for audio production or maybe it's for whatever it might be, your email marketing service. That even could be included in your apps or platforms, okay? So think in terms of not just the digital app that you would have on your phone, but any type of online app or tool that you're using, including platforms. So assessing each app based on a set of criteria. So how, what is it for? How frequently are you using it? Are you using it daily? Are you using it monthly? If you never, ever used it, I want you to assess that. And then I want you to assess also um, cost versus benefit. So what is the cost? How much does it cost you today to maintain that app? Did you get it on a lifetime deal? Are you paying for it on a monthly subscription? Do you have an annual subscription, quarterly subscription? What are you doing in terms of pay? So write down the exact number next to each of these apps that you're paying for out of pocket 
or if it's an LTD, a lifetime deal, you're not paying for it anymore, but just write LTD next to it. So this is a simple way for you to do it, but I'm going to show you also my um, dashboard. Finally, I want you to create a column next to each of these apps, and I want you to decide which ones are keepers, which ones you delete, and which ones do you want to replace or consolidate. So keep, delete, you're not going to use it anymore, you're getting rid of it, or replace slash consolidate. Because sometimes what you'll find is that there are different tools that you can potentially use at the same time, and they complement each other. Okay, the goal is that you're trying to get to a place of digital minimalism. That's what we want. Now, I'm going to share with you a couple of ideas, but first I'm going to do this. Now, if you're listening to the audio podcast, you're not going to be able to see this. So I encourage you to watch the video on YouTube or to check it out on Spotify on your mobile app. But I'm going to share with those of you who are actually here with me live. I'm going to share the actual screen that I want you to see. Okay. So two things. First of all, I have a couple of ways that I keep up with something called a SaaS inventory or software as a service inventory. The first time I came up with this, I actually created it in Google Sheets. And this is what I gave access to my Stream Bosses Academy members to use. And so they literally were able to jot down a list of every software tool they had in the sheet, what the URL or the location of that app is, because sometimes we forget that too. What's the purpose? We assigned these by category, so I gave them a starter list. So scheduling tools, lead magnets, live stream platforms, project management, etc. These were common categories for me, for my own SaaS inventory. I gave them the monthly, annual, lifetime deal or free for pricing. So this is in the spreadsheet as well. And then whether or not it's inactive or active. Now, another column that I added later is the delete or replace or consolidate. But whatever action you're going to take, you'll indicate that here, okay? Now, you can also do the same type of spreadsheet on your own if you choose to do that using something like Airtable or Retable. So I wanted to show you this. And speaking of Retable, that will be our next Content Hacks Day. So I'm going to tell you in a few minutes about Content Hacks Day and what that's all about. But what we have, um, same thing, software, category, cost, pricing, where is it located, What's the purpose? Is it active or inactive? And then I do need to add that new um, category for it. What am I going to do with it? Delete it, replace it, keep it. What's the action item that I want to perform here? Now, when you have indicated the ones that are inactive, you can then begin to filter out, right, and remove the ones that are not active. So if you're in an Airtable or um, Retable or something like this platform, You'll then be able to create a view and you can do, do the same thing in Google Sheets or Excel as well, but you can create a view that completely just makes those inactive apps invisible so that you can have a clear running list at all times of what you're actually using. Like what do you have that is active right now that you can use? Because then the next time you get ready to make a purchase of another online app, you can go back to your spreadsheet, to your table and say, oh, you know what? I already have something that does that. So now you're thinking smart and you're being more strategic about the purchase. And if you add that in conjunction with the idea of pausing for 24 hours before you buy, of course, that's going to help you as well. So the last thing I'm going to share with you before I share a little bit of information about our content hacks day is that let's see what we got here. Here's some tips. Tip number one is to do a regular audit. So you've done this inventory one time, as I've just shared with you to do. You've completed the inventory once. It can't just be once because you're still constantly adding and changing and shifting your systems. So you want to think about, okay, I'm going to do this. Maybe it's every 30 days. I'm going to do my own, take an inventory of my apps every quarter. Whatever the frequency might be for you and for your team. Speaking of team, when you do something like this and you've documented the apps that you have and you have this inventory, it makes it so much easier when you bring in a new team member so that they are familiar with what you have available. And then you can also identify areas where they may need training to help you by learning how to use those platforms. Another benefit. So I want you to definitely think about doing a regular audit. I want you to adopt an in, a one in, one out policy. 
So every time you get ready to add a new app, think about what you can eliminate. If you're adding an app today to do X, is there something you can also eliminate? And that way you maintain a regularly balanced inventory of apps that you're using and you're not all over the place. A lot of people call um, your list of apps or online tools their tech stack. So I'm going to do some future videos where we talk about what's in my stack. And then finally, I want you to really kind of think about for you and for your purpose, what is the set of goals or not even that. What is the set of criteria that you're going to think about and list out every single time you're going to make a purchase for an app? What's the criteria? Is it that it's five star? Is it that meaning five star ratings that people have rated it as a five star? Is it that um, it needs to be under a certain amount? Is it that it can only be a lifetime deal? Whatever the criteria are going to be for you to make your next purchases, I want you to have a list of that as well in your standard operating procedures, your SOPs for your business. All right, those are my main tips. The last thing I'm going to leave you with is if you haven't already, and before I do that, let me remind you, if you have enjoyed this show, make sure you like it, you subscribe and you follow. If you've enjoyed this episode, this is an episode of our App Therapy Club podcast. You can always subscribe over at apptherapyclub.com so that you never miss an episode of that. This specific App Therapy Club show is all about helping you to be more streamlined in your systems where you're using different apps and tools. All right. So what we're doing with Content Hacks Day is really kind of revolutionary. It is not about the normal style of webinar workshop, you know, that everybody does and sales pitchy and all of that other stuff. I don't want to do that. Instead, what I would love to do is all these different apps that I'm on YouTube talking about and sharing with you and you go out and you invest in. Thank you. <laughs> All of those, if you are not maximizing the use of these apps to be more effective in creating your content, then it makes no sense for you to buy them. So what I'm here to do is to help you through using some of our more, most common apps that I know our community uses at Stream Bosses Academy. And if you're, you've been in my YouTube channel for some time, Stream Like a Boss TV community, then you also probably have invested in some apps Monday what we're going to do is we're actually going to, and I think I have that link. There it is. We're going to be smarter about our app purchases. So the very first content hacks day is Monday, the 26th of February. And this will be the only one that is free. No cost whatsoever. We're still coming up with ideas, but there are definitely some that are on our hot list. And I'll share those with you in just a second. So the content hacks day, here's what we're talking about. If you go to tanyas.link, so T-A-N-Y-A-S dot link slash hack day one. This is our first ever hack day. And you can sign up for free. Our future ones will not be free or no cost, but Monday because we're experimenting, as I often do, we're going to try this out. So what we're doing is we're talking about the Sessions app. And we're actually going to be hosting this event inside of Sessions, at least right now, trying to make sure we don't get that infinity window thing. <laughs> so just make sure you sign up and I'll make sure you have the latest location. But Monday, we're going to be exploring content hacks specific to the app called Sessions. Now, Sessions is a platform that's designed to really substitute for meeting apps and booking apps. So if you're someone who uses Zoom regularly or you might use Blue Jeans or you might use um, booking apps like Book Like a Boss or Calendly and those type of things, Sessions app combines a lot of these into one space and it has a lot of hidden features that most people who have purchased it don't know anything about. So we want to explore those and it's super relaxed. Again, I'm not talking at you or lecturing to you. We're, of course, doing some teaching and coaching because naturally that's what I do. But I also want to make sure that you get your questions answered. So come and hang out with us if you want to know a little bit more about how to use and leverage your Sessions app. If you've already purchased it, this will be ideal for you. If you haven't purchased it yet on the page, you'll actually see a link where you can go and check it out. I have an affiliate link inside of the page. So go to Tanya's link, Hack Day One, okay? to find out more info. A couple of the ones that we have on our radar for coming future content hacks days, Retable, which is the app that I shared that looks a lot like Airtable, but lots of fun features. And that was yet another lifetime deal. And they do have some deals going on now too. Sessions, of course, we're going to talk about Cast Magic. 
For those of you who don't know what Cast Magic is, go a couple of episodes back where I interviewed um, our guy from Cast Magic, Greg Wasserman. He was awesome and showed us all these amazing things. So we want to explore that in another Content Hacks Day and really kind of just get in there and break it. <laughs> That's what we're doing. Um, we're going to talk about Ecamm Live. So we're going to do a, a probably more than a 90 minute on Ecamm Live. But I know a lot of folks who have Ecamm Live but don't make the best use of it. So I'm going to talk through that. Um, and then StreamYard and then Go Brunch. And if there are ideas, if you have ideas about future content hacks days, I want to hear from you. There are a lot of different tools that are out there. Heartbeat Chat is one. Group App is one. So anything that I have in the past recommended, and you won't know all the things I've recommended more than likely. So send me a note and say, hey, what about this? And if I know it, then we can spend some time breaking it down, making sure that you're leveraging it to the full. All right. So that's Content Hacks Day. Well, that's all I have for today. And I just want to remind you in terms of your app therapy, that it's so important for you to avoid digital distractions. That was the focus of our conversation today is how are you able to avoid digital clutter? And I wanted to give you some tips on how to make sure to do just that. So hopefully you'll take those and apply them to your own space and do that inventory of your apps so that you know what you have available to you. And you know that you're making the best decisions for your business and for your time. Thank you so much for watching or for listening. If you're listening to the audio version of App Therapy Club, we appreciate you. You can actually subscribe and get access on all the sites. So you can get access on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, um, wherever you choose to listen. And definitely on our YouTube channel as well. We have a podcast tab there as well. So if you want to watch or listen, you can consume this information however you choose. I'll see you next time inside of App Therapy Club. Thanks for joining us on this App Therapy Club episode. Remember to subscribe here and on YouTube so you never miss a post. We'll be back talking about systems, tools, and tips to help part-time content creators get more done in less time. We'll